Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today we are on lesson number eight of our thyroid beginner series, and this lesson is going to be on levothyroxine, synthroid, and tyrosine with the title, Do T4 Medications Actually Work? So let's just jump in right now. Uh, we know that T4 medications are the most commonly prescribed hypothyroid medications out there. So what that means is doctors, when they determine that you have thyroid related issues, they almost always give you these type of medicines. So we're probably the numbers are probably something like 97, 98%. I'm making that up, but that's probably about accurate, accurate I would say. But the problem is we have a lot of people who are on these medications, but not doing well. So we're going to explore why that is. So first of all, why do doctors use this, these type of medications? It's based on the assumption that your body, when you take these medications in, will activate them and make them function the way that it, your body does naturally. And so remember, if you go back to our thyroid conversion lesson, you know that T4 is not the active thyroid hormone. Your body has to change it and alter the structure so that it turns from T4 into T3. And so when you take T4 medication, that still has to occur inside of your body. And doctors assume that it's going to occur at a 100% perfect rate. And we know that that's probably not true in at least as many as 15% of patients. And this is, has to do with um, genetic differences and changes to the enzymes that control this function. So without getting too um, sciencey here, just understand that enzymes, they function on a spectrum. And so if, if you just took 100 people and you looked at how well these enzymes work, in, in one person it would function at 100%, which is normal. In another person it might function at 90%. In another person it might function at 120%. So the, some, in some people they go faster and in some people they go slower. But what does that mean for you? That means the rate at which your body changes T4 into T3 is different from all the other people out there. So if we applied this logic and just gave everyone T4 medications, we would expect that the rate at which people do this to be different among all these individuals. And we know this is the case, and this is the case with medications such as antidepressants and pretty much any other medication. In fact, doctors have ways to check your genetics, and they do this for antidepressants. Uh, why they don't do it for thyroid medications is beyond me, but they do it for antidepressants, and they'll check your genetics, and they'll say, hey, you, you, uh, whatever, let's just say you metabolize Paxil way too quickly, so we're going to put you on Wellbutrin instead. And they do this all the time. And so the same logic applies to hormones, especially thyroid medications. Now, one of the, the biggest problems for patients is that they take T4 medications, and yet they still have symptoms of hypothyroidism, despite having so-called normal a normal TSH or normal thyroid labs. So you have to expand the way that you look at thyroid labs. And we'll talk about this. I have a, a whole section here we're just gonna we're gonna touch on briefly, which gives you the normal range and then the optimal range. But I wanna talk, I wanna stick to the T4 medications just for a moment. So why do you think doctors use these medications? Well, there are some benefits to using T4 medications. So I don't want you to think that they don't work. In fact, they do work for a lot of people. Not for everybody, but they do work for a lot of people. Um, and in some way, no matter how you look at it, you're going to need some amount, usually, I would say 95 plus percent of people are going to need some amount of T4 in, in thyroid medication to feel good. So they might need some T3 in there too, but the base is still going to be T4. And the reason for that is T4 has a very long half-life in your body and in your blood. What that means is it takes a while for your body to use it. And so that's really good. That's really good because if you miss a dose, um, let's say you take it at different times. So if you take it at 8, 8 a.m. one day and 6 a.m. another, uh, or you miss a couple days or you go on vacation, you forget it. These are problems if you use T3 medication because it's burned up by the body much quicker. But T4, it's not that big of a deal. In fact, you could go a long time without it. I don't recommend it. I'm just saying that, that that's the way that it works. So doctors, they feel safe about that. They're like, well, because doctors would rather be safe than sorry. In fact, a lot of what they do, the way that they treat patients, has to do with a lot of it protecting themselves and trying not to hurt you in the process. But make no mistake, a lot of it has to do with them protecting themselves or the CYA sort of mentality. Um, and that's, that has to do a lot with why they use those. But how, what if you fall into that position where you're taking T4 medications like Synthroid, Levothyroxine, or even Tyrosine, and you still don't feel well? What are you then supposed to do? And the first thing that I would say is you need to find a doctor that's willing to order the right tests. So you need to look at more than just your TSH. Now the TSH, and this is where this, um, 
this image here comes into play. So we have all of the all of the thyroid lab tests here, and we have the normal ranges and the optimal ranges. Now most doctors they will only order the TSH, and they will and you if you've seen the other videos you'll know why. But they make the assumption that TSH gives you all the information you need about your thyroid. Well, that's that's definitely not the case because we want to actually look at the free thyroid hormones. We want to actually see what is happening to those hormones. And we know from studies that patients who take T4 medications can get a normal TSH, but these patients almost always have lower free thyroid hormones in their blood compared to normal healthy individuals. So then they're not really normal, right? They may have one test that has become normal, but the other ones have not. And so you can't say that these people are exactly the same. They're just not. That's just how, there's no other way to put it. So if you want to see what's going on in your body, you have to get the full test. So I recommend at least getting the TSH, definitely the free thyroid hormones, free T3, free T4, and reverse T3. You'll definitely want to look at these ones too, but we'll just focus on these four for now. And look at these and put more emphasis on your free thyroid hormones, free T4 and free T3, than you do on your TSH. And by looking at those, you can determine if your body is actually getting that T4. Is it coming into your body? Is it, is it being absorbed? And is it coming into your blood? And then is your body taking that T4 and turning it into T3? It's a very simple concept, very easy to look at. If your T4 is very high and your T4 is very low, well, then it probably isn't, right? Even if your TSH is normal. So you have to look beyond that TSH. And remember, if you're taking thyroid medication and you have normal th thyroid lab tests, then you should not be symptomatic. So you have to look at your symptoms in conjunction with these tests. And so looking at symptoms like hair loss, are you still losing hair if you have a normal TSH? Are you still gaining weight? Are you still constipated? Um, are you still fatigued? All of those are symptoms of hypothyroidism and they should go away if you are being treated appropriately. And so you can look at these can look at the, the optimal ranges that, I, that I've talked about based on healthy adults and, and so forth. But I want to give you a couple tips, just three quick tips that you can use if you're taking T4 medication and if it's not working for you. So number one, you can switch to a different type of, of T4 medication. So if you're taking level thyroxine, you can switch to Synthroid. If you're taking Synthroid, you can switch to level thyroxine. If you're taking either of those two and it's not working, switch to Tyrosine. These, all, all these medications have different amounts of fillers and dyes in them, and they may affect the way that your body utilizes it, the way that you absorb it, and the symptoms that you experience. So that's number one. Tip number two is, if you can't get your doctor to prescribe tyrosine, or you can't afford it because it is a little more expensive, then you can switch to a level thyroxine slash synthroid 50 microgram tablet, which has the fewest fillers and dyes of all of those different types. It's the only one that's white. The other ones are like pink and blue and purple and all these other colors. But remember, to get them that color, they have to add dyes to it. So if you get rid of the dyes, and a lot of hypothyroid patients are sensitive to these dyes, you can get the white one, which has zero dyes, and it's sometimes a little cleaner and can sometimes help people. Number three, start or consider taking your thyroid medication in the evening. So most people say you have to take it in the morning. But the interesting thing about taking in the morning is that your gastrointestinal system is more active then. And that's usually when people have their bowel movements and, you know, that, that's just how it goes. It's more active in the morning than it is in the evening. So if you take it in the evening when your system is a little slower, more of it will be absorbed as you sleep. And studies have shown that some people who take it in the evening actually have higher free thyroid hormone levels than those who take it in the morning. So these are some quick, simple tips that you can utilize, and most doctors are going to be willing to, to work with you on these tips. So um, they're, they're pretty easy to get going, I would say, which makes them very valuable. And so that's pretty much it. This Today's lesson was all about those T4 medications. Don't think that they don't work because they can. Sometimes you just have to play around with the dose or play around with when you take it or play around with the type of T4 medication that you use. But even if you make these small changes, a lot of people will feel at least somewhat better. Um, so that's it for today's lesson. If you have any questions about T4 medication, please leave it below and I'll do my best to get to those comments. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in, in the next video.